All right, so what we're doing now, we've got a, a 12 volt submersible pump, water pump, fountain pump in the water. And we've got it hooked up to a barrel plug with an on off switch and a 10 amp uh, 120 volt uh, 10 amp converter. So what I was uh, mentioning in the last video that some of these pumps, uh, some of them are variable speed where you can uh, put a 12 volt uh, dial or potentiometer on it and actually uh, control the speed of the water flow through the pump by voltage like 5 volts, 7 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, etc. So with these uh, mechanical pumps, I say mechanical, with a mechanical maneuver, I mean lever that you can move, you can also dial down the water or slow down the water. So I was going to show you. So this is, uh, we'll just turn it on here. See how low the water is? We can probably slow it down a little more, but uh, that way when the water returns back, it goes into the radiator and it comes back into the ice, and the ice water, when it trickles back in, it won't hit the ice so hard and melt the ice. It's, and so this pump uh, wide open, Let's see. So it's got a dial on the front. So that's how fast it comes back in on the ice. And it just pulverizes the ice and melts the ice. So you can dial it back to a crawl. Maybe a little slower. Like that. So if you set it like that, and it because it's 33 degrees water, and it's only traveling 12 to 18, 20 inches at the most maybe 18 18 inches so when it's trickling like that you don't have to and it also you want the uh, the water hose the return to be underwater or inside of a you know some kind of a baffle or something to uh, to control the water where there's no friction from the return water on the ice at all so even if so you don't want the water hose like way up here when it's falling on the ice so with the water just trickling like that, you're going to preserve your ice for a whole lot longer. So uh, what normally might last an hour, 45 minutes, hour, hour and a half, you trickle it back in. You can With a 12-volt, you could probably dial it even slower to a crawl. And on the mechanical, you probably could too. It's just reaching in there and setting it down. Because if you get to, let's see if we can even get it to a slower. You can actually... Then it starts making noise because it's not getting any water. So if you look at that, that's just about a crawl. So under pressure, uh, you've got to get it up high enough, say eight inches up with the head pressure to uh, actually circulate through the heater core or the radiator. But when the water comes back in, uh, I recommend putting a baffle on there. Even if you run it wide open, you can run a baffle, I mean, like kind of like a maze or a muffler, to where the water doesn't pound on the ice. No matter uh, how fast the water's coming in, you can have it coming in in different directions. So uh, anyway, that's one way to slow down the water, one of the ice uh, water air conditioner uh, tweaks you can do. So... Uh, you can watch some of the other videos I mentioned, uh, go through some of the designs and as I'm building some of these. I used to use a really big one, but when you reduce the specs on everything and make a mini split out of it, you don't need a really big ice chest or a big uh, radiator or a big anything. Uh, as long as the heater core is big enough to, you know, be cool enough to where when the fan blows across the square inches to pull that much uh cold temperature off the aluminum fins uh, and blow it into the air for a small room like an 8x10 8x12 it's really well like it works uh, it worked to me it works like a 5000 BTU because uh, if if you took apart a 5000 BTU air conditioner little wall unit took it apart and looked at the radiator size you you the box is really big but the radiator itself and the fan isn't that big it's the compressor and the pump and the electronics and the motor or whatever it's all the parts that make the box big but the radiator itself if you could snap your finger and make the radiator cold by magic all you would need is the radiator which is the size of a book so 
the rest of that stuff is only necessary for to pressurize the coolant in the radiator. So with ice water, all you need is something like this. So uh, all you're doing is take, this is cold water, but it, it's just for a general purpose. So all you're taking is the ice water and using this tiny little pump to pump it through a radiator and get that radiator 33 degrees, but the water's 33 degrees, all ice water's 33 degrees going through the radiator. And it works just like a window unit. So uh, it's amazing what science and, uh, I mean, not science or technology, but it's amazing just uh, breaking it down, the, the, the physics behind taking an ice cube and looking. It, it, I, for me, it started, I was making all kind of different ones that only lasted an hour when I first got started, even with a big ice chest full of ice. I was just pulverizing the ice with the return water. I didn't, you know, nobody on YouTube shows you how to slow it down. So one day I was like, you know, I can do better than this. I can slow it down. I can put a baffle on the return of the water so the water doesn't hit the ice and f cause friction to melt the ice. So I took an ice cube and I was just looking at the ice cube and I said, okay, here's the problem. There's the ice cube. There's 32 degrees. How do I get the temperature from the ice cube to me, to my face, to my body? There's a gulf a fix between us and I got to figure out how to do that. And you can do it with a... 12 volt pump, 12 volt fan, a little heater cord, some ice water. You got to make sure that the fan though and the CFM pulling through the fan or pushing, I use them as pullers, that the uh, radiator size and the square inches and the depth and the space between the fins and the fan match to where it can pull the air sufficiently without hindering it and not too big where it can't pull enough air through. So anyway, I'll make a few more videos on tweaks or a few more, hopefully a several more. And I hope y'all have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah, that just happened. I dropped the phone. Almost dropped it in the water, but it hit the thing and bounced to the side. So we'll put that in the bloopers. Bye-bye.